Good morning, and welcome to the last episode of Season 6 of MATC Now. On today's episode, we will be learning about the dietitian program, viewing a tutorial on preparing an unconventional snack, getting a sneak peek of the television program tradition, and lastly, we get to view a place to get delicious treats just in time for summer. How exciting! Stay tuned for all this and more coming up on MATC Now. Hello and welcome to MATC Now. I'm your host, Courtney Bondar. Even though I may be the last show of the season, we've still got a show for you today full of segments that you'll love. Today I have Yaquan Burroughs, Deems New Experience. Thank you so much, Yaquan, for joining me today. How are you? Thanks for having me. Life is absolutely amazing. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear. But absolutely. before we get to the interview and sure. learning more about you, I want to welcome our field correspondent, Joe O'Keefe, down in the S building in the downtown campus. How is it going over there, Joe? Hello and thank you. I'm your field correspondent, Joe O'Keefe, for the last MATC Now. And MATC stu MATCA students all over the uh, campus are hungry for knowledge, but they're also hungry for actual food. And I'm in a very specific department that's going to spill the beans on everything you need to know. Coming up in just a moment. <laughs> that's wonderful. We'll get back to you later in the show. I can't wait to hear more about the useful services for everyone here on campus. We all know summer break is coming up, and the change of seasons means a change for your health. Student producers Christopher Rivera and Luke Brunzel get an inside look into the Nutrition and Dietary Technician program. Let's take a look. With the school year ending and summer just around the corner, it's time to go outside, get some fresh air, move around. However, it's not just exercise that you'll need to stay healthy, but the food you eat as well. Luckily, MATC's Nutrition and Dietary Technician program has all the info you need. Inside the 10 credit embedded dietary manager certificate, you learn food service management inside a lecture space that's connected with a lab that we have the opportunity to do service learning in the community, which is a super exciting part about that class. And you also have the opportunity to take a clinical experience wherein you're going into a healthcare setting and you're learning about what food service managers do in that space. Things like sanitation, food procurement, ordering, food storage, food safety, HACCP procedures and the like to help the food stay safe throughout the process of when you obtain it from the provider, from the grower producer to the distributor into your kitchen, you're producing it and then you're offering it to the clients that you're serving. In addition, you also learn Nutrition for Dietetics, which is an understanding of how nutrition, macro, micronutrients connect inside of the body and how from a therapeutic standpoint, nutrition is prescribed to help with managing chronic diseases. In addition to the 10 credit course, you also have uh, in, inside the 10 credit courses, you have Serve Safe Sanitation, which that particular program course offers you the opportunity to obtain your Serve Safe Manager certification through the National Restaurant Association. So essentially by the end of that 10 credit package, you have the opportunity to receive a certificate that you can work in area, any area uh, food setting, whether it's a restaurant or inside healthcare food service system, as well as the 10 credits in ac academics and 150 practice hours to sit for the ANFP approved program through certifying body for dietary managers credential to become a certified dietary manager. That particular subsect of a certificate offers you a job coming out starting at 50, 50 
50 to $55,000 per year here in the Milwaukee area. So that's embedded inside of our two-year associate's degree program where beyond the food service management component, you learn higher levels of management including leadership, business acumen, and human resources management inside the umbrella of food service management courses. And you also learn medical nutrition therapy, which is a more detailed nutrition care process content material that once you move into your work as a nutrition and dietetic technician, you collaborate with healthcare providers to work on the prescriptions and the, and the nutrition education and the diet prescription for the clients that you're serving as well as learning nutrition from the life cycle from infancy, actually in utero, through older adults, and community nutrition. Other skills and courses that you learn inside our two-year associates for nutrition and dietetic technician are things like nutrition counseling, where you have the opportunity to gain those skills of listening, that's what I tell my students, really important to listen first before you offer any nutrition information, and then of course, connecting with your client so that they understand that the prescription that you're providing as a nutrition professional is something that they can truly implement into their um, lifestyle. So these are just some examples of things you'll learn through our program. Seems like there's a lot of great info you can learn. When can students sign up for this hardy program? Yes, so the Community Health and Nutrition Navigator program had a soft start in, the, in this spring. We're fully marketing the program for starting in the fall of 2022-23 school year. So you will have the opportunity now to start registering for these classes. Alright, five, four, three, two, one, you are live. Today we went to go visit a MATC student alumni here at a steel company. Let's see what he's been working on. My name is Matt Rick. I graduated in 2021 and I graduated from the TV production program. The summer after I graduated, uh, it took me a little bit to find a job. So I basically just took some time off, relaxed a little bit after how hard the TV program is here at MATC, so just relax a little bit. And then in the fall, I got this job here at Our Steel. I work here at Our Steel. Basically what we do is we film tutorial videos or tutorial classes for HVAC professionals to watch and use when they go out on a job and um, fix what they need to fix on homeowners HVAC systems or air conditioning units, stuff like that. Not only has he gotten a jump on his career, he is also sharpening his skills he learned at MATC on the daily at work. So my role here is basically a number two to Jeff Jelenchek, uh, another former MATC uh, alumni from the TV production program. And basically what we do here is, you know, I just film, run the camera while he uh, directs and produces the shows that we air live. How I feel when I direct here is pretty comfortable because in the TV program we got a lot of opportunities to direct our own shows and other people's shows. It's so really my time there at, in the TV program really prepared me to um, direct here and do other directing jobs that I may have in the future. My experience after graduating has been limited because this is the only TV gig I've had since graduating, but I'd say the difference between MATC and this gig is it's really only me and Jeff, so we have to rely on each other and work as a team more. Sure, there was 16 of us at MATC that put uh, a show together, but here it's more of individual work and trusting in each other to uh, get the show out and get it done the way that we know we can get it done. One was for our student ops, I hosted the trivia show, and that was really fun to host because I got to make the questions and design the set and uh, get talent and do the show, and that was just a lot of fun. And Some advice I'd have for graduates of the TV program would be to keep in touch with your professors because they have a lot of connections in this field. 
which can help you land a job opportunity to get you started in the field. And number two would be to make sure you keep in contact with your former students because you guys are going to miss each other. Student producer Adesina Reina definitely did a great job showing us what a degree from TV program can do. It's truly great to see our students uh, and what they're able to do after graduating from MATC. Alumni are truly amazing. I couldn't agree more. Now it's time to check back in with Joe. He's at a very important place on campus as it helps benefit students who may need a resource to turn to. What you got for us, Joe? Thank you, Courtney. And in this time of finals, everyone needs a little bit of help. I'm here in the Resource Center down at the downtown MATC campus, and I'm here with Haley, the uh, Student Resource Coordinator. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm really excited to share what we have here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about this place. What's going on here? So the Student Resource Center is a place that we hope we can connect students with all of the resources, mm -hmm. internally and externally, um, mostly non-academic resources that students need to be successful. Mm -hmm. So in our center, we actually have a bunch of different um, resources and organizations. We have mental health services and counseling. We have food share. We have legal aid for students going through legal issues. Mm -hmm. We have driver's license recovery, a food pantry, and hopefully yeah. a lot more soon. Yeah, are there any specific you wish to talk about at this very moment? Um, I think that one of the things that people love when they come in here is that we actually do have counselors that come, you can come and talk through the stresses of transitioning through mm -hmm. school. And like you said, finals are a really stressful yeah. time. <laughs> so you can come and um, you can see a counselor here yeah. for free, which is great. And then also food um, is really important yeah. for studying and brain. <laughs> and I see you have the food pantry here. Would you like to tell me all about that? I would. Um, so we actually launched last November, so we're fairly new. Um, our food pantry is located in S215 mm -hmm. at the downtown campus. We are open three days a week and we have food all on the shelves and then also we partner with the culinary students, which I think you're going to ask me about later. I might have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with, if you're a student on campus, we're open Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. On Wednesdays and Thursdays, we're open late. Um, students can come once a week. They can grab one of these bags and they can fill up their bags with anything that you see on the shelves. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anything you see on the shelves, we do get um, deliveries every week, so really? stuff is changing. So it's new every week? It's mostly new. As you can see, some of the things we get a lot of, so like we have a lot of mustard and peanut butter. Brand new beans every day. Brand new beans. <laughs> um, uh, we're really lucky that we partner with Feeding America, and so they get stuff mm -hmm. from Aldi, they get stuff from Amazon, they get stuff from Sendex, so we have we have nice brand name stuff. You really got stuff um, for everybody, even the babies. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Um, and um, we try and switch stuff out, and so mm. I can order once a week, but if we have like a lot of green beans, I'll try and get yeah. like, corn or something. And the uh, so that. the food shelter is free for everyone at MATC? Yeah, so the food pantry is totally free. So when you fill up your bag once a week, all you need is a student ID to come in. You'll sign in with one of our student workers at the front desk. Um, and if you have any questions, they can answer mm -hmm. the anything about the food. And so. you uh, mentioned the culinary uh, course. Can you tell me a little about that? Sure, yeah. So we partner with both the culinary students and the nutrition dietetic technician students. Um, and what they do is our culinary students in the food advocacy class mm -hmm. will take food um, fr and cook it and actually repurpose it and we'll put it in this fridge here for students to come and heat up and eat mm -hmm. during the day like lunch. Do you have any examples you could show us? Um, so it's Monday, normally they cook on Tuesday, but I think we have a few <laughs> salads left. Anything you got will be uh, greatly yeah. appreciated. So we have a Southwest corn and bean Ooh. salad right now. We try and do vegetarian or vegan options as well. I guess I'll put um, this in my bag Yeah, now. Can, you can take that with you. Um, and they go right away. They're super, super popular with the students and they're mm -hmm. always kind of changing. So they're really good quality. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. I love learning about everything to do with the food shelter and yeah. I hope everyone can check it out when they can. Yeah, please yeah. come in and visit us. Thank you. Back in the studio, Courtney. Thank you so much, Joe, for telling us all about the food pantry and all of the wonderful information. It's great to hear all about this very important 
resource here on campus. And thank you, student producer Ariel Campos, for giving us a glimpse of this awesome resource. So if you're aware of this special program or not, every year the TV production program here at MITC takes over the station on Student Operations Day. This gives students, gives you hours of student produced content. Coming up this Saturday, this year's Live Block producers Caleb Andrew and Tyler Offield gives us a sneak peek of what's to come this Saturday where you'll also find me hosting from noon to 4 p.m. Everybody comes together in the TV program. They put all their work all together that they've been developing for months and months and months, even from last year. And we put them all into one day, which is May 7th of this year. And it's a day where we just air everybody's work the entire day. We have our own cool live block where our live block producers are producing content live for us to be able to view and react to accordingly. And it's, it's so much fun and it's a real way to shed light on what we've been working on for the past however many years we've been in in programs some people have been in it for two some people have been in it for more it's just it's a way where everybody comes together to create something incredible and it's the coolest thing in the world my job is basically just helping out everything i can with the general manager marcus and also assisting the first years we second years have learned a lot over the past year compared to first year. When you first get in the program, you're kind of just getting introduced to the basic fundamentals of what television production is, but you're not really getting into the nitty gritty. So the content that you make is really bare bones and just exploratory to understand what you're doing. In second year, you really get down to refining your craft. And me as assistant GM, I'm really there to help the first years refine their craft ahead of time since I have had those experiences in second year in order to you know assist them with their learning and how their shows come out. I've seen a lot of them in action. They are a very committed group of individuals that really want to learn and it's very evident. They always want to be proactive in helping with other people's shoots, other productions. Every chance that they get they will take part in it and they really want to be better creators in the future and that's very evident and they're showing that a lot very early on. My show is called The Author and it is about a girl going through high school as she is uh, just trying to enjoy high school with the best friend. She starts to bully her best friend and starts to do all this other stuff that she doesn't want to and doesn't know why she's doing it. In the end she finds out that she is a character in a book so she decides to we write the book in her favor. I think people will enjoy it because it's like a good coming of age story and it talks about, you know, you creating your own path and all that stuff and don't let anyone else kind of write your own story. So my show is called Jogging for Office. It's a comedy mockumentary type show where it follows like a, uh, a young guy who's trying to go for a very obscure random position that some would think doesn't even need a, uh, a campaign for, but uh, his father works for the local government and he kind of like is helping him through this process and it's just his whole, this, his whole uh, documentary of how he's, how he's going about doing this campaign. I think people should tune into my show because it's a very unique concept and uh, it's not, it, it happens a lot in like bigger stuff, but it's, uh, when it's like a smaller production, I feel like it's more, it's, uh, it's almost more real. So, uh, and then I'd, uh, I'd like to, I'm trying to get into the comedy writing aspect of TV. So uh, I feel like getting people's opinion on how I went about that is a good way of starting off. So much happens here at Arts at Large. We, as part of our mission, are trying to bring as many arts enriched opportunities as possible to this community and all throughout Milwaukee. So we have free programming. Every Saturday there's a workshop. We have drum circles, we have concerts, we have in-school programming and programming throughout the community. In fact, this exhibit that you see here is curated all by our career development students. So all of the pieces of art that you see in our gallery and will be here on May 7th are all done by students. 
We have after school programming Tuesday through Thursday that will last right now through the end of June. In addition to that, like I said, we have free workshops every Saturday from 10 to noon. We have free concert series, about two of those a month. And of course we have this block party that will have workshops, live music, chalk art, caricatures, food, and a marketplace. So from about 12 to 4 o'clock, we're gonna have all sorts of various workshops going on throughout the building. At 3.30 p.m., there will be live music starting outside. And then we have a marketplace going from 12 to about 6 p.m. that you can buy local handmade art pieces from vendors. If we're like a second family, it's, it's something truly different you don't see in any other program. And I think that we've developed our skills alongside each other very well. To our own, and it almost seems like every single person has their own strong suit. Someone may be a better editor than someone else. Someone may be a better talent than someone else. Someone may be able to write something really, really amazing that we put all these skills together and we create something amazing. And that's why I think that student operations is going to be so good this year is because everyone's bringing their strong suits together to create something awesome. And we've grown just an exponential amount. It's, it's awesome. I certainly can't wait for this Saturday. The student producers have put in a lot of work into their shows throughout the semester, and it really shows. Now, Aquan, tell me what it's like to be the Dean of Student Experience. Uh, it's a true honor, and again, thank you for having me today. Um, to supervise a, a number of dynamic areas here at the college. Um, some of those areas include student life, uh, that's engagement and leadership for students, um, our bookstores, our childcare centers, our food service areas, uh, including our Student Resource Center, which you saw Ms. Haley Weber just a minute ago, uh, highlighting our Student Resource Center and our food pantry, um, but also counseling and psychological services, uh, as, well with, as well as our Veterans Resource Center. Oh, of course. So I know graduation is coming up. We oh, were yeah. speaking earlier about commencement. How long has graduation been at Pfizer? Ah, well, graduation, we had the opportunity to get to Pfizer last semester, uh, and our students truly enjoyed being in the space where the Bucks played to really celebrate their accomplishments. Um, and so we heard our students and said, hey, let's try to create a relationship. Let's try to keep that going. Not only are we across the street from them, from our downtown campus, but we're also, to, to, we're also able to provide a number of other resources like free parking due to our 8th and State parking garage for those guests and for our students because of the proximity and so how close it is. So again, it's really awesome to have them as a partner now to support our students in celebrating their accomplishment. Yeah, yeah so awesome. is there a commencement speaker that's yeah, been announced? Uh, you will. You will definitely have that commencement speaker be announced here soon in the week ahead. Uh, again, if you don't know what the week ahead is, that's our publication for students and faculty and staff to make sure that they're aware of everything that's going on campus that's a shameless plug for everybody to check your emails and make sure that you guys are reading up on uh, on what's happening at the campus on a weekly basis yes of course I bet students are gonna be eager to be checking those emails Absolutely. so Absolutely. you talked about two uh, counseling services what sure. kind of counseling services are provided oh we have a, a myriad of them uh, we have uh, some ongoing counseling services just for students who want to stop in and just need somebody to talk to and then we have also crisis counseling uh, we have a, a new system called LifeWorks uh, that's attached to our student login page um, that again if you're in need of anything at the very moment especially when it comes to mental distress um, to, you can reach out uh, to that particular software uh, and get in touch with somebody uh, in short order uh, and that's a great option for our students especially for those um, who are in, in dire need of, of needing to talk to somebody as we, in which we all do at some time uh, in, our, in our life cycle as students and as individuals as professionals and so with that um, life uh, works is currently currently in process uh, and again our counselors as well are there to hear. Uh, you schedule an appointment with them, uh, sit down with them, hang out uh, and, and again um, they'll be able to continue to coach you through uh, uh, your experience here at MATC. Of course. So I just want to ask you really fast. Sure, sure. What is it like being the Dean of Students in experience? Yeah. What, um, what do you like most about it? <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, I, it's just an honor to really be able to, to be the backbone that 
number one student advocate for students at the college, um, the, really listening to the needs of our students, and then being able to, to provide resources to kind of cure those needs and to remedy some of those issues that they see on a daily basis is a true highlight of my job. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear, and thank you so much for providing me with all this information. It's really good to get a glimpse of what you do in your role and how you're such a beneficial aspect to this campus. Thank so, you thank so you. much. No, thank you. Thank you. It's been absolutely great to hear all about these wonderful things that Quan has shared with me about and with upcoming graduation with some tips for new students and tips in general about graduation and more has been wonderful. But this week, Chef Rex is not cooking for us today. Although we did find a very interesting recipe for, um, for us to give a try over the summer break. Let's welcome special guest chef, Chef Ariel, as he shows us a classic snack with a twist. What's cooking over there, Chef Ariel? Thanks, guys. I know we all can't wait for the summer to arrive. Neither can Chef Rex because he's out camping and couldn't make it today but he shared with me the perfect partner to pair with s'mores when you're out at the campfire. And it all starts with crickets. You can either buy these from a pet store or hunt them down and capture crickets out in the wild yourself if you want to return to the old hunter-gatherer ancestors. Anyways, freezing them for a couple hours typically kills them, but if you want them to be even more fresh, you can freeze them for less time to keep them in a hibernating state. I'm going to add some flavor to the crickets with some seasoning. To season these, you'll need salt, pepper, chili flakes, garlic powder, paprika, lime, and I'm also gonna make these out of tacos, to make these into tacos, sorry. So you'll also need tortillas, onions, cilantro, and your choice of hot sauce, as long as it's not garbage. Lastly, you'll need a knife, a spoon, two pans, a spatula, oil, and always a clean set of hands. What you wanna do with these clean set of hands is to clean the, clear, the crickets with water, you know, put water in there, move it around, make sure not to squish them, then strain them, strain the water out, and then once they're out of their bath, it's time to season them. You take lime and then squeeze them into the crickets, you know, get that juicy lime in there. Make sure they're nice and coated with the amount of seasoning that you prefer. Now I just added one, because that looks like about to be enough. I'll Add one more just in case, maybe just a little bit more. Boom, that should be good. All right, I'll add a little bit more paprika. And then I'll add some salt. Add some pepper and some garlic powder. Make sure it's not too garlicky. And some crushed pepper because I like it spicy. Boom, awesome. I like to add a little bit more seasoning just because, you know, once the crickets are mixed together, it's time to get cooking. I've got two pans. I've got them on medium heat, one pan for the crickets and the other for the tortillas. Now it's time to sacrifice these little guys. So let's get these right in here. Make sure they're all out there. No legs, no legs out. Boom, we're gonna add a little bit of oil. You know, just enough to fry them, not too much. Make them nice and crunchy. Set this off to the side. Now they're gonna cook for about a minute and a half. Don't mix too hard because then you'll, you know, you'll break them up. So maybe just like keep them off the heat for a while, just shake it up. And while I'm doing that, while that's cooking, I mean, we'll have the tortillas on the pan. I'll make two. Now, like when you need to, you'll flip them because you don't want one side to burn and the other not to cook at all. Once that's finished cooking, put it back into your bowl. So the plate. So then when the tortillas should be done by now. Oh wait, no, we need a little bit more time here to flip them. Huh, my bad. So take them off the stove for when they're ready for it to be assembled. Now they seem about good. So it's a little hot. Pardon me. And then now, for the good part, the actual crickets. Look at that. They're nice and brown. That's how I like them. Now you make sure you want to fit enough in there. Now this looks good. Boom. 
Perfect. All right. Now we put them into the crickets into the tortillas, and now you want to add as many, as much stuff you want in them. For me, I like to put cilantro and onion, because that's what I like in my tacos. I don't know about you guys. Uh, maybe maybe it's a bit more lime. You know, make them a little bit more limey. And now, once that's done, we got to top it off with some hot sauce. Boom. You can use any type of hot sauce or sauce or salsa if you like. I personally like to use tapatio because, you know, the guy looks cool. It's mariachi. Boom. Feel free to add anything you like. These are good. Now. Crickets are packed with nutrients and a good source of protein with a subtle, nutty flavor. Adding them to tacos lets you have a cheap, efficient, and easy meal to make. And even you can even skip most of those parts and cook them by themselves. I can't wait to have a taste of these buggers. Back to you guys in the studio. Wow. I never would have thought to try crickets, let alone cricket tacos. Looks like it's time for another MATC Minute. Take it away, Courtney. Commencement for all MATC programs is Sunday, May 22nd at Pfizer Forum. If you're graduating, make sure that you have everything you need for your big day. If you need a Chromebook or a hotspot for the summer, visit the Student Technology Assistant page on the MATC website to ensure that you stay fully connected this summer. Feeling like you're in need of a summer class but haven't registered yet? You're in luck. Go to MATC self-service and enroll as soon as possible. You don't want to miss out, and especially on graduation. Mark your calendars and stay tuned this Saturday at 10 a.m. on Channel 36 for MATC's very own Student Operations Day. There will be plenty of student-produced content that is sure to entertain. Don't forget. And finally, make sure you finish the semester strong. It's been a long semester and summer break is right around the corner. I know, but hey, classes are not done just yet. So hang on, stay focused, and get your classes done. We're almost there. Well, Courtney, you certainly finished that minute off strong. With summer break on the horizon and plenty of free time, student producer Jamie Stryker is showing us a great brand new hidden Jim K.E., Perfect for the summer. Hi, I'm student producer Jamie Stryker, and this is another hidden Gem KE. Located in Bayview, Sprocket Cafe opened in November of 2016, offering a variety of items including bagels, sandwiches, and coffee. Every good cup of coffee starts from the grounds, and every good coffee shop starts from the ground up. Owned by two women, Juliet Popovic and Gwen Barker, they wanted to create a small, cozy place for friends and neighbors to meet and enjoy great coffee. The cafe brews beans from local coffee maker Anodyne to create their own house blend. Originally, the owner had a love for antiques and had opened Rusty Sprocket Antiques next door to what is now the cafe. Whether you want coffee or bagel, Sprocket Cafe has it all. One student producer, Jamie Stryker, and it looks like all the time we have. Catch you later. Well, it looks like I'll be making plans to visit there sometime soon, and especially after break. Unfortunately, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Aquan, for joining me. No, thank you for having me. Of yes. course. And to everyone who tuned in this season, thank you so much for watching. To all the instructors here in the program, thank you for all your hard work teaching the students and myself included. But before I go, there's one thing I want to leave you with. I want you to remember that you can achieve great things and make impossible achievements possible. Keep striving and believe in yourself. And as always, I'm your host, Courtney Bondar. Have a great rest of your semester. Favorite food? 